there are two new Linux phones that are going to be available in 2020. The Pine phone should be in my hands in January. And there are various older Android phones running different versions of Linux for mobile. In this video, I'll introduce you to these different mobile Linux OS flavors and tell you where these projects stand. Will they be ready in early 2020? Stay tuned and find out. Exciting times in the mobile Linux world. Particularly exciting is the coming availability of the Pine Phone, which is a $150 phone. I purchased a Braveheart edition of this and I'm really excited to get it. But when I get it, the first question will be, what operating system do I put on it? Well, good thing it got delayed because having the hardware come too soon will not be helpful if I don't have the software to run on it. And this is just about the Pine Phone. There are the older Androids that are still being ported to Linux and we'll talk a little bit about where that stands and also about why these projects move very slowly. Now, let me introduce you to several Linux mobile OSs that you can consider as a solution in 2020. I'll talk about each one where they stand development wise and I'll link the projects in the description so you can check them out later on. The first is Ubuntu Touch from UB Ports. I already made a video about installing Ubuntu Touch. I've installed it on several OnePlus Ones and plenty of Nexus 5s. And I actually use it myself. It's the phone I carry when I leave home. The iOS phone stays at home. A thing that Ubuntu Touch is already very usable as is. Though personally I find that it is not as quick to use as an iPhone for example. There are many unnecessary clicks like in making a phone call. Some of the buttons and menu options are small and if you're trying to do something very fast like find something on the phone while you're in the car you really have to put your eyes on that because you're not going to hit it with your finger not so with an iphone but ubuntu touch is very stable the bugs are rare in normal use and i'm using the current version at ota 11 and i'm able to do standard linux things on it like ssh and running typical command line stuff it's pretty locked down though it's meant to be a stable phone and not be intended to be used by linux geeks like many of us i wish i could play with regular desktop apps on it just because it's fun to know you can but this is the main incompatibility of ubuntu touch compared to the other distros that i'll talk about later since it uses a less common graphical interface called Mir. So many standard GNOME and Qt apps will not work on it. It also uses an older Linux kernel which introduces incompatibility. One of the things I wanted to do was to make some apps for a Linux phone and I find myself stuck here. I'm not sure I want to invest time developing software for Unity which is the environment that Ubuntu Touch runs on. Anyway, for the average person, this will work great. In fact, Ubuntu Touch is the front runner being in a more production ready stage than the others. It's the only one that I found that has demonstrated that it can make a phone call on the Pine phone. This was only a few days ago. Marius from UB Ports used a Pine phone to call Lucas from Pine64. And here's a snippet of that demonstration. Hi, Marius. Hi, Marius. Hey. Oh wow, are you calling me from the Pine Phone? Yes. That is absolutely amazing, dude. Yeah, I, so can you hear me? Your, yours is a little bit crusty, but that, that's already known. But how is the receiving end? On my end, you sound absolutely crystal clear. Nice. Amazing work, dude. I'm so hyped. I'm, gonna, um, I'm recording this, so I'm going to put it up for other people to hear. Okay, yeah. So if you only fix the the my the, the other side, this is uh, looking good. So yeah, on my end, I have a little bit of a distracting echo. You know how uh, sometimes people have uh, their phone on loudspeaker or something like this. So I can kind of vaguely mm -hmm. hear myself. So it's slightly distracting, but otherwise, it's absolutely perfect and super clear, actually. Nice, nice. Okay. That is good. Uh, yeah, I have you on speaker because the, the airpiece doesn't work, so... Oh, I see. So that, that might be why. But it sounds absolutely great. Yeah. 
Thank you no. so much, dude. That's Thanks good. for the phone call. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Awesome work. Take care now. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. So this means that when I get the Pine phone in January, it will be able to make a call. None of the others have gotten that far. Though the other platforms can copy what Marius did on UB ports. One of the known problems with Ubuntu Touch, and in fact practically all the Linux mobile platforms, is the sketchy Bluetooth for telephony. This issue is likely because they're all using some older version of the Bluetooth driver. As I said, Ubuntu Touch is based on an older Linux kernel 3.5. So if they find a newer Bluetooth driver, it may not be 100% compatible with the older Linux kernel. So to summarize, the Ubuntu Touch is the, the best state today and is ready for use in 2020. The next mobile Linux platform I'll talk about is the distro post market OS running the mobile environment called Plasma Mobile. Now, these are two distinct projects. Post Market OS is just a regular Linux distro based on Alpine Linux, and it uses Plasma Mobile from KDE to provide the graphical interface. Post Market OS is already fairly advanced in its development on a Pine phone. I think it will catch up quickly with Ubuntu Touch and getting the hardware to work. At the moment, calling SMS and Bluetooth aren't quite ready, but otherwise it's getting usable. This is key because Postmarket OS is a mainline Linux distro. This makes it extra exciting for someone like me. I could run any current Linux app on it. Plasma Mobile is made by KDE, so this is a fairly popular graphical environment using Qt which is the counterpart of GNOME. Even Plasma Mobile will run on a Librem 5 as well. Now, I haven't seen enough videos of Plasma Mobile in action to see if the mobile interface is up to snuff compared to Ubuntu Touch. Mostly, it still looks glitchy in the videos that I've seen. But I'm particularly excited by this platform because this is where we get closer to the convergence idea. The OS being the same for the phone and for the desktop. This is where I will find myself doing a lot of programming and experimentation. Postmarket OS primarily focuses on older phones. It relies on integrating older phones to Linux through something called the Halium project. This project is supported by all the mobile Linux platform developers, especially UB ports. And the idea of Halium is that it uses the original Android drivers that come with a phone, then they put those in a container, so the drivers think they're running under Android. Then the container connects to Postmarket OS or Ubuntu Touch through a translator called Hybris or LibHybris. This becomes a way then for other Android phones to be ported over to Linux with very little change to Postmarket OS or Ubuntu Touch because all the integration work happens in the Halium layer. In theory, searching for compatible drivers and matching proprietary driver software will no longer be necessary and porting will be faster. At least that's the theory. But in practice, there are still so many incompatibilities and the task of matching Android drivers to phones and having a smooth connection to Linux is still not perfect. This is where a Linux phone can skip all that. A real Linux phone does not use hybrids and does not need Android drivers. The drivers just have to be available in advance in the Linux kernel or sent upstream to the Linux kernel and that's it. So the new Pine phone and Librem 5 should accelerate mobile Linux development and hopefully similar projects will start as well. I was looking at a video of the Pine phone running Postmarket OS and it couldn't make a call because the developer edition didn't have an antenna. So development will accelerate when the hardware is complete and shipped. Again, it's a crazy time because the hardware is just coming out and the software is not even ready. There's another mobile Linux platform in the works specifically for the Librem 5, and that's called Fosh. That development is spearheaded by Purism and it requires a Librem 5 for now. I've seen less of it than the other platforms. I'd say it would be the most basic of all. They're just trying to get basic things running like phone calling, texting, and simple apps. But in theory, it's just a GNOME desktop running on pure OS, so apps should be easy to build. 
They just need a mobile interface. Like Postmarket OS, this is a mainline Linux as well. I actually started building an app for the Librem 5, but I paused it since it will be many months before I even see a Librem 5 phone. There are two other mobile platforms that are in an advanced stage and will round out the total of five platforms. Loon OS is the next one. Loon OS originally came from Palm and known as WebOS and the community developing it is called WebOS Ports Community. This group also supports the Halium project and are also doing development work on the Pine phone. And I say develop and work like these are big companies. I will be frank with you. These companies need your support. I can probably name one individual in each platform that is working on a specific thing like the Pine phone. There are very few people involved in actual development in each platform. It's amazing how much they are focused on this and with no big box or large community and we all benefit from their work. I thank them for all their commitment and you should donate to them so they can keep doing this. Now back to Loon OS. Loon OS looks pretty good from the UX side. I think they're still working on smoothing out the GPU side of things, something that UbiPorts has seemed to resolve. So they're not likely going to be the early bird. I'd say Loon OS will catch up in the second stage. I'm not sure they'll be ready to release a PinePhone version by March, while Ubuntu Touch should be running by January and maybe post-market OS soon after. You can install Loon OS on a Nexus 5 today, but I'm still searching for info on what will work and what won't work on a Nexus 5 before I try it. I have spare Nexus 5, so this is something I can check out soon. Loon OS will ultimately be a nice addition to the Pine phone as an OS. Web OS was a fairly developed OS back in the Palm days, so perhaps it will have more standard apps. But it may also be using an older Linux kernel, so it is not a mainline Linux project. At least that's my understanding right now. It would be great in the future when we can just have multiple SD cards that we could just plug into the Pine phone and then we can switch to a different OS. I'd like to be able to switch between Ubuntu Touch, Postmarket OS, and Loon OS. I think each OS will have different unique strengths. Kind of a geeky thing to do, but I'm the type to want to do that. The final mobile Linux OS to mention is Sailfish OS. Sailfish OS is actually the most sophisticated. It has the cleanest UX. It's a for-profit company, so they have more programmers compared to the other community open source project. Sailfish is likely superior to all of the above in actual use, but it's a paid software and they're not available outside of the EU, though I don't know why. They also sell the OS commercially to countries like Russia and so on. One of the nicest features of Sailfish, if you can get it, is that it has Davlik, which is the virtual machine used to run Android apps in KitKat and older Android versions. And it comes as one of the versions of Sailfish. This means they can run Android apps very well. This makes it a very practical phone from an app's point of view. A Linux phone that can natively run Android apps. I think it is limited to Android apps that run on the KitKat 4.4 version, though most of the apps do run on 4.4. Parts of Sailfish are open source and parts are not. I'm particularly wary of the Davlek feature because I want to see if there's any Google telemetry with Google Apps. Unfortunately, I can't get Sailfish OS. I'd be willing to pay for it. It would be a great alternative to Android and iOS and it's a finished product. Right now, it only works on a couple of Sony Xperia models, though support for the Pine phone is in the works as well. And they will also likely support the Librem 5. Though Sailfish is not of benefit to us directly outside of the EU, at least they also provide support to the Halium project so they can help us all see new devices on some of the other platforms. So that's the state of mobile Linux for early 2020. In another video later on, I'll talk about Android and how this has deviated from Linux in a big way and how Google is planning on bringing that Linux connection back. That has some interesting implications. I've tried to simplify this very complex topic of developing mobile environments for Linux but there's a lot of detail in here that you can ask about in the comments below. Thanks for watching and please subscribe for more videos coming regularly.